Now this is going to be an example of an emergency use of this syringe. Let's say your, your pump has failed or something. Somebody stole it. And you're still hungry. This is the Hexon, the Edelrid Hexon stove that I've been using on some of these demonstrations. And because this is somewhat difficult sometimes to use with kerosene, although I'm going to be demonstrating this first with Coleman fuel, uh, I decided also because this is an extremely compact little stove, as you can see, I mean, it, this is the most compact backpacking stove I think I have had in my own ownership. There are others like the Nova that probably come close, but unfortunately they have a proprietary connector for their fuel bottle or pump. This has what I call a universal connector. This little jobby. This attaches to a Lindel type valve which is found on canisters but also found on fuel bottles like this Primus pump. No, this is not the Edelrid pump, but the Edelrid pump except for some design changes has the same kind of, an, of a connection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that I, somebody stole my pump or fuel bottle. Fuel bottle and my pump. And I've got this little adapter here that I've made up. I've got other videos that show this in more detail. I'm going to, hopefully they didn't steal my adapter. And uh, so I've got this connected here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the uh, the fuel valve, the control valve. And I'm going to put in, this is that syringe that I was showing you that I had. I'm going to disconnect the needle. I don't need it now. And I'm going to just gently thread it onto this thing here so that I have a good, uh, a good grip on it, basically. And I'm just going to put in, well, I can't really see the, the markings. I'm going to try to put in a couple of cc's just to kind of prime the line. Just a little bit. I don't need to have fuel spurting out. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and start up the um, the alcohol. It's already got some fuel in there, as you can see. Some of it probably went through anyway, but that assists in starting up the burner. I usually wait a little bit. Usually, once the uh, residual fuel that's still in this um, fuel line starts to vaporize, you start hearing some hissing. Uh, or roaring from the burner, which is a good sign, as you can probably hear now. And that's how this thing starts getting started. Uh, I usually wait for these little flames to die down. They're of no consequence, especially with this chimney. But uh, but I, that does help in getting things moving through. I'm going to start putting a little pressure on this. Okay, you can already hear the burner taking off. So I'm going to take this little thing off here, and I'm applying a little more pressure to the syringe, and I'll take the collar off. Now I have no choice here but to stop pushing because I've only got two hands. They didn't steal my hands, but that's all I've got. Because there's some air in this syringe, it acts to continue to apply a little bit of residual pressure, but not enough. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put a pot of water on. This is 500 milliliters. And now I will go ahead, open up the fuel valve uh, all the way, and now apply a reasonable amount of pressure to the syringe. Uh, with this particular apparatus, you basically are using your thumb to control the, uh, the amount of fuel going to the burner. And if you apply a reasonable amount of pressure, it doesn't take much, you don't wear yourself out, uh, it will run the burner at maximum capacity. Also because this has an air bubble in it that acts as a kind of a buffer so that it kind of keeps a relatively steady pressure on. If you put more pressure on, the, the, the first transmission of the pressure on the plunger is to the air bubble, 
and so it tends to moderate things as opposed to having no air in it at all where you, you now have a direct one-to-one -one pressure from your thumb to the liquid. So I prefer to have at least about five, for a 20 cc syringe, I prefer to have about three to five cc's of just air within the, um, within the syringe. Again, now this is an emergency. This is, you, you, you want to get something to eat, you've got your freeze dried food, you don't have an operating pump or you don't have a pump at all, and you fortunately have got fluid, and you have brought with you one of these syringes and one of these adapters. Now the syringe weighs 10 grams, so as you can tell it's actually a very lightweight pump. Uh, now the idea here is to hope that 500 milliliters of water will boil within the 20 cc's of fluid that you have within this uh, syringe. Uh, that will supply about 7 minutes of total burner time at maximum output. I'm not timing this, so I don't know how much time I've used. And I can't see the markings on this uh, syringe. I'm going to see if I can move this a little bit closer to the... You can see this now on the monitor, but I don't want to get too close to the flames, obviously. Now again, if you take your finger off of this, you still get some residual pressure from the air bubble, so you can kind of relax your finger from time to time. I'm applying a little bit more pressure, see if we can't hurry things along here. Again, at maximum output, the flow rate through the line is about 3 cc's a minute. Now there is one additional advantage to having this syringe. If I have any residual fuel in the line after the water comes to a boil, I can then just aspirate the fluid out. I don't have to push it through the line like is typically done with these fuel bottles. And that helps to save fuel even more. I may or may not run out of fuel though before the water boils. Now in this particular situation I'm just resting my hand rather than my thumb on the plunger, which is a lot easier to do. Initially, it's probably best to use your thumb so that you get a good idea of the, uh, the burner characteristics. But after that, you probably can just rest your hand on the uh, plunger and it'll supply enough force to uh, move the fluid through. It's getting pretty close to boiling. visible bubbles on the bottom 
of the pot. barely in the video uh, that there's still a little bit of fluid left in the syringe. I would say that this constitutes a boil. It's definitely rolling on the surface. And again, it beats rubbing two sticks together, if that's all you had as an option. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that at this point we're happy, that this is hot enough. So I'm going to go ahead and then just let this stop. It'll stop on its own. As you can see, there's almost no fluid left in the, in the syringe. And we'll just wait for this thing to just stop. Now I'm going to go ahead and aspirate whatever residual fluid is still in the line, which is about three cc's. It doesn't sound like much, but it, if you're down to your last few cc's of fluid, uh, a fuel, it, it adds up. As you can see, I'm trying to do this. Uh, ideally, you want to kind of raise the stove up at a higher level so that the fluid goes downhill but um, but that's about as best I'm going to be able to do um, close off the valve and let's see how much uh, we have left here um, I have about oh three cc's or so not very much 